Welcome to the MBS Show, episode 120. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Rom. Hello, all you happy people. Hey, Rom, how are you doing, man? Awesome, awesome. Mm. Buckled up and ready to roll. Ah, cool, cool. Uh, thanks for playing me the game, man. No problem, my pleasure. <laughs> yeah, you you at home are wondering what game we're talking about. We're, we're talking about Double Dragon Neon. It, it was on sale on Steam, and... Yeah, Steam, Steam is awesome. <laughs> I wish we we're, we're doing gonna a... punch some stuff in the face. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. I wish you were uh, playing games right now, but I have a responsibility to you all at home. So, yay! Hope you enjoy this as much as I am doing it. And also joining us today is Kitsune Risu. Hey man. Hey man, how are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. A bit busy, but all right. Busy with the Steam sale. I'm busy playing all the games that I bought at the Steam sale. Uh, let me guess, this is going to be a steamy topic, ain't it? Pretty much, yeah. I, I'm currently playing three games right now, simultaneously. <laughs> okay. Right, as well as doing the podcast, but it's okay. I'm Asian, I can do it. <laughs> oh, alright, man, alright. So, what did you recently I control, bought? like, one, one con- on each hand and one with my face. <laughs> uh, so, it's a connect game, alright. <laughs> yeah, it is. So what, what, I'm, doing, I'm doing like Skype Connect. I can see I can see you from my home. Uh, so glorious what, 3D, and I don't like it. So, so what game you what game did you bought? What game did you bought? Uh, actually, honestly, so far I just bought uh I bought Naruto. <laughs> I ain't judging, man. I ain't judging. You How much judging. was it? It's ten bucks. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, ten like bucks from, is okay. Like from from uh, from the original price of I think it was like fifty five. And it came down to twelve dollars. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, why not, right? It's it's something that I've been interested in. Uh, yeah, I had my eye on it for a while, you know, mm. and I was like, but fifty five dollars is not a PC price. It's mm. a console price. And these that's not a word. The Bandai Namco have no idea how to price games on the PC platform. So it's like, okay, sale. You know, I'm gonna get it. Are we are we doing are we doing plugs for Steam by the way? Because it's summer sale. Yeah, we should we should get paid. <laughs> I know we should, but anywho, well, okay, so you you do enjoy your Naruto, and um, no, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you do it's, enjoy it's, the game. It's a, ter- it's a terrible anime. It's a terrible manga. Yeah, that's right. I said it. You want to come to my house and fight it out? <laughs> Naruto, One Piece forever. Yeah. Oh god. Well, a- anywho, th- thanks, Kitsu, and also joining us for today is Tim or Pony Tim. Hello, I'm back. Hey, welcome back, man. How are you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. Oh, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Aside from going, ah, cons in two weeks. But besides that, fantastic now. Oh, yeah, the cons in two weeks. But before I move into the con, buying any games on Steam? Honestly, I've been doing Steam sales since uh, Steam first did sales. Uh So, honestly, most of the games I'm interested in, most of them I've bought already on sale. I mean... The, uh, there's a couple I'm interested in. Like right now, I'm look. I would want some Bioshock Infinite. It's on sale now uh, for seven forty nine. But I think I can wait until it gets down to five bucks. And also, I'm I'm trying to remember the. Uh, I, I'm blanking on its name. I can't remember the other one. Um, no, it's the one where uh, you you're like uh, the queen's protector, but she gets killed and you get framed for it. Oh, dishonored. Uh, dishonored. Yeah, that one. I played that game. It's fun. Yeah, I want to pick that one up. But no, honestly, uh, I have a ton of games that I still I have a humongous back uh, log so I really don't want to buy too many more games uh, because I are it's like I'm already drowning in games it's like first world problem I'm I have too many games but no right now uh, I finished up uh, Batman Arkham City a few weeks ago I'm been playing uh, XCOM Enemy Me uh, Within that's oh, okay. been pretty fun actually I think I'm getting near the end of that one as well Besides, I mean, not too many games. I, I don't play too many video games uh, anymore, just because school, work, convention. Mm, oh yeah, especially convention with how it's going now and how soon it's coming. Oh yeah, yeah. you should oh, bring yeah. Batman like to the convention <laughs> and play it there. Yeah, I'd have to bring my desktop. That'd be kind of hard. Oh, it would be cool. It's like uh, can't convention it'd be fine. It'd be gaming. Fine. Well, I mean, look I'm, at all these I games that I bought from past sales. <laughs> Like a squirrel, well, you know, I'm taking a road trip uh, to uh, to Seattle this year, actually from Chicago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's going to be a 30 hour drive. It's going to be me and three other guys in a regular sized car. So uh, 
definitely have to be careful with uh, our space, and especially mm-hmm. since I'm 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 not like huge, but I'm I'm still a pretty hefty guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I have to be very conscious of how much space I take up. Uh, well, well, there's always the roof. I don't know. I I'm always paranoid that I'm gonna be going down the highway. The things gonna be strapped. We're gonna have luggage strapped to the roof, and then suddenly, phew, no more luggage on the roof. <laughs> luggage uh, all over the highway. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I can understand that, man. Anyway, um, be safe on the road, man. Be, be safe. I will do my best. Um, but yeah, be, uh, I'm actually going to be going with uh, Calpin and Ca- uh, Couch Crusader from uh, Equestria Daily. Ooh. And uh, one of our vendors, uh, Valkron, will be coming with us as well. So we're going to go ahead and meet up and take a car down over to uh, Seattle. It's going to be fantastic. Awesome. Road trip. Yay. Road trip. Anyway, um, Tim, please be safe because... We want you back. That's, having you here is fun. Don't say it like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're saying like something. You're saying like something bad is going to happen. No, it's the, you know, <laughs> it's, it's the old man mentality. Please be safe, you know. <laughs> but anywho, let's, let's like if I die, remember my love for ponies. <laughs> Tim, Tim, I want you to drive as unsafe as possible, <laughs> possibly while drunk. All right, and make sure to aim for the sidewalk because that's where all the cool people drive. This sounds like a fantastic idea. I don't see how it could go wrong in any way. I don't know. I'm, I'm full of good ideas. That's how I've made my way through life to where I am right now. Anywho. And all my scars. Anywho. Mm, if that bad advice I'm on the way, let's move on. Mm, uh, mm, composure. Anywho. Yeah, anywho. Um, anywho, let's move on. Uh, so, moving on to the next topic, this is going to be an interesting one since next topic is housekeeping and everything off West plugs. But since we have you, Tim, I'm going to save it for later. And so, let's move on to news time. And, Rom. My time to shine. News time. In today's new time, Quiz app adds a My Little Pony section. Like to test your knowledge of My Little Pony with other bronies? Want to see if you're the best among your friends list? If the answer is yes, check out Quiz Up. Quiz Up is a trivia game on the i os and android platform you can challenge other players from around the world in various topics recently they've added a my little pony category to the game links can be found in the show notes below yay this is fun have anyone played this besides me nope no but we I don't should have try it no out. the os and no the android oh no we, we, we should try it out i'm gonna i'm gonna get i'm gonna get it right now okay you do that and tim let's let's have a game let's have a game right now in the air no it's it's uh, it's complicated to find friends and stuff but it's fun but no no we're not gonna do no, that i'm now. just gonna read it i'm just gonna like read it out and uh no okay uh no i'm game <laughs> yeah so, why not uh honestly see, i look... will probably do horribly but, um, I, I like pretty much most of these episodes see, norman I once again once. enemy of fun all right <laughs> It's not fun. We're we're on a timeline here, and we need to. Oh god! But okay, if you want to download it, do download it. And it's already fifty percent done. Oh god! But anyway, Tim, have you played it? Uh, no, I haven't. Ah, so I'm the one here then has played it. Okay, not so, for long. Oh Installing. But anywho, let me just explain my experience of the game. Um, it's basically a two-player. Well, yeah, obviously trivia. You need two players, so it's a two-player game. You fight. F- a person from around the world. I fight people from Thailand, Canada, Russia, and even the US. All those Thai bronies. Yeah. <laughs> so, anywho, um, when I play with them, we get random questions like, who has the most purple curly mane? And yeah, obviously, that's going to be rarity and what. So, a- anywho. Who's the um, prettiest, prettiest princess? <laughs> oh, d- 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 there's no questions like that, but still. It's a. Uh, V2 kind of game and whoever goes to the 10 questions with the fastest time answered they win oh it's by time yeah it's yeah it's time by 10 seconds for each question but before it goes into the time they give you the topic or they give you the questions it's like a 2 second gap before the time counter actually starts Mm -hmm. so you get to read the question and the timer starts if you're a really slow and bad reader um you're They're gonna, gonna have a really bad time. Yeah, you're, you're gonna, gonna lose have a lot of a time. Bad time. Yeah, you're gonna have a hard time. But it's all fun. It's all fun. Um, Twilight, New Lunar Republic from uh, James's stream, and also the helper for Sketchy Sounds. He played it, and he's at level forty-two now. And yeah, uh, right. seems he's having fun. All right, let's let's check this out. I'm I'm trying to find it right now. Uh, all right, search for pony. All right, search for pony. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, play now. 
You know. All right, yeah. you ready for this? You ready for this? I'm gonna, yeah. So, yeah. ten questions, Tim. Mm-hmm. You're gonna help me win. All right. <laughs> all right, let's do this. Uh, okay. All right, and if if this goes bad, I'm gonna hunt you down <laughs> and get you revert my score. All right. Uh-huh. Ready? Play now. Okay. Beginner okay. level one playing from Singapore. All right, searching for the perfect opponent. Uh, I can't believe we're doing this. Seriously. By playing from Ireland, I'm finding a guy from Ireland. My little pony, Ramon, get ready. Okay, where is my little pony developed for TV? Cleveland, Los Angeles, Portucket, or Vancouver? Vancouver. Vancouver. All right, there we go. Round two. How many licks does Crackle have? Four to eight or six? Eight. Eight. Yeah, we got it first. That's not a word. Yeah, Ireland, get down, Ireland. Round three. What is Rainbow Dash's pet? Hydra, <laughs> Crocodile, Tortoise, or Turtle? Tortoise. Tortoise. No, it's Turtle. Yes, they accepted sure. Tortoise, but we got it late. So Damn he's it. leading, actually. In the episode Mystery on Friendship Express, who created the chocolate mousse mousse dish? Gustav, uh, Donut Joe, Gustav. Mr. Mrs. Cake, or M- Gustav? It's wrong! <laughs> you fool! Yeah. It was Mulia! Norman, Yeah, you Gustav fool. made the eclairs. Uh, Where were the Equestria games held? Crystal Empire, Candlelock, Crystal Empire. Yeah. Crystal Crystal Empire. Empire. Oh, we're losing, Norman. This is all your fault. <laughs> Sorry. You made me lose Thank face you, in front of this Irish guy. Which filly wears a tiara? Zipper wheel, silver spoon, featherweight, or twist? The uh, Diamond Tiara. The, yeah, the tiara one. The one with the... the there's no, the, there's no tiara. There. Zipper wheel. Zipper, zipper, zipper. Zipper wheel. Last round. Times two bonus. Discord had his first appearance in which season? One, two, season three, two. Two. We are doing very badly, my friends. What was the, the question? Which season did yeah, Discord you, first appear, right? Season, season two. two. <laughs> we lost, guys! Congratulations! <laughs> Yay! But we rock. Woo-hoo. Yeah, but th- those are those are the questions, and that's how the game is played. That's it's really played. That's yeah. pretty fun, actually. You it's know really what? fun, and and they're actually pretty interesting questions because not all of it is as simple as I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like, how many how many ponies are in the main cast? Six, 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 six. Stuff, yeah. Nothing like that. No. Who the hell is Zipper Will? I don't remember. Zipper Will is the oh this that's a season four question, my friend. Ah, there you go. Yeah. You see, so. People who have not watched season four need not apply. <laughs> but still, it's fun. So yeah, it's that's fun. that's the game. That was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. So Did yeah, like like kids to Gosh. like kids to say, it's pretty easy to download and play. You just need to register. Just literally to play one minute. Yeah, and you, like 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 he said, took one minute for him to download. If you're registering via Facebook, it's quite simple. Or if you have an email to uh, register with, it's fun. Like you should. Try it. It's not only ponies. It also has video games, sports, and whatever interests you might have. So go take a look-see. It's fun. But anywho, let's move on to the next topic. A heartwarming Brony article in the Chicago Now. Back in February, a journalist reported on Brony documentary done by John Delancey saying that it was pretty amazing. Now the same journalist journalist has written another article about the Bronies. To be more specific, her nearly four years old son. The journalist goes on to talk about how her son is obsessed with Rainbow Dash and how cute it is. Here are some memorable quotes from her son. To strangers on the street, this is Rainbow Dash. She is very beautiful. See? See? Frantically waving it at them. Rainbow Dash needs to put her shoes on too. They're invisible. Can we watch My Little Pony? 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 This is what was written in the article, ladies and gentlemen. Can we watch My Little Pony? Can we watch My Little Pony? Okay, oh my okay, God. we get it, we get it. <laughs> Okay, links can be found in the show notes below. This is one story that it's heartwarming and nice, but I think it's you might not agree, right? Well, there was a similar thing that came up quite a while ago, remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and we were talking about it with um, with that rarity-loving freak. What was his face? Oh, no, James come on. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I love you, James. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I did I did talk about the idea um, of of why... It's bad. It's it's not it's not that it's a bad thing. It's quite nice, and it's quite sweet. But my main problem with it is that it should not be a thing. It should not be news. Mm-hmm. In the sense that how I feel about it is that if things like you know men or boys or male demographic accepting a show like My Little Pony is still news, that mm-hmm. just means that it's still a thing. Mm-hmm. And I think the the way the world should start moving towards right is which is true acceptance is when it stops becoming a thing. It stops becoming something interesting to write about because it's no longer something that creates emotional response or challenges viewpoints. 
in the world. For example, and this is the same example that I gave uh, back then, but if anyone were to write in a professional sense, in a professional publication, if anyone were to write an article about, oh my god, there are adult fans of Spongebob Squarepants. No <laughs> yeah, one would that. really pay attention to that because everybody already knows and everybody already accepts that Spongebob Squarepants is something that adults and men watch. And there's nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. So the fact that people are still saying, yes, oh, my, my male son likes My Little Pony. It's, it's a thing. It's a deal. Just draws attention to the fact that it's still not accepted. Okay, but you do have to remember sometimes where in this current situation, the reporter wrote this in an article where, in my mindset, it would be something like a mother showing photos of uh, his or her son or daughter, whatnot. And to me, this is that current situation. Like, oh, take a look, see at my kid. Ain't he cute? Yeah. Uh, right. and I, I actually agree with you. I, I think you're, honestly, uh, I think you're taking it a bit too uh, uh, seriously and mm. uh, looking for something to be offended by. It's I, I see it more as a, oh, hey, uh, this is uh, just an op-ed about my kid uh, who likes ponies. I, well, I no, 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 no. Let, let me correct you there. I don't take offense at anything. Like I said, the... the, the <laughs> piece itself is a very nice puff piece it's it's you know it's cute it's nice I w- but um main, mainly it was just norman just uh, bringing up the fact that i did have a problem with a previous article that was written a while quite quite a while ago actually so mm-hmm. it, i'm just uh, reiterating uh, my feelings, feelings on, yeah. on on what right. happened then i have nothing against the articles themselves i'm just saying that the fact that it's news just changes the yeah, but you know, perception. Well, of it's the U- it's uh, the USA. Everything is news all the time. <laughs> you can't escape. Uh, that's uh, only see that. I, fair enough. If I can get kind of political for like just a few seconds, all right. I do think that's definitely an issue with the US. Is our twenty four hour news cycle? I mean, then you have to make news out of mm. every little thing. And, oh yeah. Uh, are we repeating everything. Yeah. I, I don't think we need it. I, mm-hmm. I think we can definitely cut back on the whole twenty four hour news thing. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, but yeah, so that's probably why stuff like this does get in the news, because they just are starving for content. I mean, not enough usually happens yeah, anywhere but... uh, to do 24 hours of news. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I-, I believe that with this kind of article or whatnot, we kind of need it, because take a look, see, um, there's a show on that guy with the glasses called What the F is Wrong With You, and it states all of the problem that humanity has like people shopping around naked in Walmart or whatever yeah but some of them are tongue in cheek <clears throat> yeah but still it's that kind of news like the recent news article with Spider-Man in Korea yeah that's news but still um, where was I going with this yeah but still I don't um, know but, but I like where we ended up <laughs> <laughs> okay, but still, uh, th- that's how news are around the world, and it's yeah, now I remember. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah essential. Then with news like this, I do enjoy it because it feels good. It makes me smile. It makes me feel happy. That's why I want. With news nowadays, you don't get that. I do appreciate news like this, and it's fun to see that a kid can have fun or can discover ponies on their own without any help from the parents, and. It's a boy at that too. So, what was going through his mind when he was looking at it? That interests me too. A- anywho, a- anywho, with that, uh, with with that feel good news out of the way, then let's move on to I would like to say guest time. And in today's guest time, we have Pony Tim from Everfree Northwest. Hey Tim. Hello. Are you enjoying yourself? I and I hope the talk about Spider Man did not scare you. I am a man of the internet. It would take something really terrible to actually scare me. Yay, awesome. I so, can show you my fanfics. No! No! <laughs> Although, if, I mean, uh, speaking of fanfic, I mean, Everfree Northwest is like the place to be for fanfic. Mm. Yes. And, and talking about Everfree Northwest, right? How is that going, man? We're two weeks out and just doing last minute preparations. Mm. Um, we actually, fun fact, we actually just picked up our last guest. We, get, we do have somebody new uh, that's going to be coming. So I can't say anything else yet. It's not public, but uh, oh, I'd is, say with, is, with it... Is she a human? <laughs> is she a human? It's actually a he. And Ooh, it's not... Is he? So, yes. Ooh, at least can narrow I it down think, on it. <laughs> uh, at least I think he's a human. I mean, I'd have to do a Turing test to make sure he's not actually 
alien. Uh, unfeeling robot meant to, uh... <laughs> mm, 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 okay. Now, okay. here to, uh, you can get to on that and get back to me. I'm gonna figure out who this is by by the end of the day. <laughs> right. Okay, can so My lips are sealed. Does, does he have hair? Uh, no. And, I actually any, have no idea. Anywho, anywho. That doesn't help me narrow it down. <laughs> anywho, Kitsu, you, you go um, search for that in silence while I'll talk to Tim. So, all right. <laughs> so, Tim, how, how has it been? Like, I know it's almost two weeks. And, yeah, um, if we do look at the timetable for this and the show post. Oh, when the show post is going to be only one week. Yay. <laughs> so, ooh, um, I'm stressing out for you, man. <laughs> Thank you for stressing out for me. But, no, I... We got a lot of uh, fantastic stuff uh, coming up. Uh, actually, uh, Stable Tech actually um, just released their coming to every Northwest video. Oh. Uh, we should also hopefully have some uh, animations uh, ready for the right before the convention. Oh. Okay. Uh, we had hoped to have gotten them out uh, earlier, but uh. Uh, you know when people could still pre-register. But all right, all right. Say, If I'm not mistaken, Stable Tech is one of the people who are. Involved with creating the if uh, what's going on? Equestria, uh, follow Equestria, right? The animation. Yeah, they do the animations for. Uh, actually, if you look at their YouTube, it's like attention. All videos streamed from this domain are accounts of actual witnesses of the events of the Equestrian Nuclear War, <laughs> the NW. Yeah, and so on and so forth. But yeah, yeah um, they got a ton of fog Equestria on mm. content. That's what they're all about. I honestly, I'm not big into uh, Fallout. That, it, it's a, I like Fallout. I like Mummies. Mm-hmm. Not sure if I like them together. Yeah, but I, of course I haven't. I haven't tried it mostly because I mean, Fallout Holy Quest is what over a million words long. I don't have that kind of time. If that you is... include all the spin-offs and all the uh, you know extra stuff, yeah, mm-hmm. probably. Yeah, from much. from what I heard, it's thicker than the Bible. <laughs> yep, and the Bible is definitely a but, thick. But then again, so is Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually only got to book four in Harry Potter before I said. Oh lord, I was no, reading Harry five Potter is, in middle is, school. <laughs> no, yeah. that just tells you I how had, long that series has been around. I, I was reading I it in high school. Hmm? In uh, university, right, where mm-hmm. we have to read like a book a week mm-hmm. for a course that we were taking on fantasy narratives. And one of them was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And we had to read the whole thing in a week. Mm. Whoa. Yikes. Oh, that yeah, and and to make things worse, the Golden Compass was next week's one, which is another book which is about uh, seven hundred, eight hundred pages long. I there's think. always audio books. I don't even think you could finish hearing it in a week. I'm not. Is it? Unless possible? you put it on a speed of two or one and a half, <laughs> but then it would so sound like a chipmunk. Everyone's a chipmunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the yeah, funny. I slog. It was yeah, that would pretty much difficult. kill all the dramatic moments. I mean, if Chippendale tried to do Shakespeare, it would not be Shakespeare. <laughs> I would totally buy tickets to that. <laughs> but, but anywho... <laughs> but anywho, uh, back to Everfree. So, you have them on, and uh, if I do notice on your website, you also have an announcement for the cosplay and event schedule up. Yeah, our event schedule just went live uh, yesterday. Mm. Uh, so you can see all of our events. We have over 100 events this year. Oh. Um, okay, this is uh, events, so like, stuff like uh, the three um, photo shoots we have for Gosley, for example, counts, um, as well as like uh, our tournaments. Like We're going to have a MLP CCG Card game tournament. Uh, tournament. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, also involves stuff like uh, the the writers hangout uh, mm. that we're going to be having, which last year was very popular. Um, actually, last year it was like one of the only things I got to take a part in. Oh. Um, the only other thing I got to do were were the panels I was a part of, which was the uh, mile long investigations and the uh, PMV contest uh, oh, panels. Okay. So uh, I'm looking at your schedule now, and you have set for three days and I'm looking at the schedule and you start at 8 a.m. Wow. That's early, yo. And the latest it goes to 2 a.m.? Yeah, our uh, our Pony Stock concert, uh, I guess it goes until about 2 a.m. on Friday night and Saturday night, so technically Saturday morning and Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. So, and um, 
I'm not sure if our gaming rooms are uh, our gaming rooms have uh, traditionally been 24 hours. I believe they are still 24 hours. Uh, so you can just go ahead and uh, you can be in there as long as you want. Uh, this year, our art room is no longer 24 hours. Uh, so, yeah, we're sorry to say. Um, honestly, not many people used it. Mm. We're basically just trying to tighten uh, things up. Actually, I mean, a lot of uh, the improvements for this year, Forever Free, was just tightening things up. So uh, we got, I believe, 15, 20% more panels in this year. Oh. Uh, as an example, just because we have really worked hard on no, figuring out how best to utilize the space. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, I also want to go ahead and give a plug out to our friends over at Ponyville Live. They will ah. actually be in attendance at Everfree this year, uh, and they will be covering the uh, convention, and they will actually be doing recordings. So uh, if you can't go to the Everfree Northwest, uh, you would still be able to, at least some of the panels, you should be able to eventually find some recordings. Those are going to be available on both the PVL YouTube as well as the Everfree Northwest YouTube. Oh, okay. So th- that's going to be fun. Like, we'll be there but we can't look around. It's based on the camera and uh, I wish I was there. <laughs> I know. I'll say, I'll, I, I, we were talking about this in the previous show. I mean, I wish I could go to Galicon, but I mean, I'm in the US and that's in Europe and that'd be mm-hmm. hard to get to. I wish During I could the... my country, but <laughs> the government stops me at the airport. Uh, but hey, anywho, uh, I'm looking at your press release, and you have uh, two game rooms, one electronical game and one um, tabletop game? Yes, we do. Wow. Um, which, the electronic games, we're going to have uh, several systems, a lot of TVs. Uh, the tabletop, we'll have a lot of tabletop games. Oh. Uh, Including, uh, actually, Silver Games LLC, the creators of Pony Finder, will actually be in attendance at this year's Everfree. Oh, that's cool. Are, are they going to um, promote their game or do anything with it? Yes, they are. Um, they're going to go ahead and uh, be running several games. Uh, you actually should be able to sign up for uh, slots to take part in games in the game room uh, from the gaming cult uh, vendor table. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to actually have the creator of the game run a game for you, like a one-shot <laughs> adventure. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and actually, there will also be a, a Pony Finder uh, panel on Sunday. Mm. Yeah, where um, it's not going to be like, oh, this is uh, Pony Finder and such and such. Uh, they're actually going to play a game of Pony Finder. On stage, with everyone looking? Yes. Oh, that, that's cool, that's cool. Well, because... it, it's in one of the side rooms, so there's not actually a stage, but it's uh, they're going to be in there. I'm not sure if it will uh, even be recorded. Mm. Uh, um, I actually, I don't know exactly what uh, PVL, Up On The Go Live, will be recording mm. uh, specifically. Oh, okay. I mean, definitely they're going to be recording the main stage, so the big ones uh, you'll definitely be able to see. I really hope that they actually cover the... Uh, writing track rooms. Oh, uh, yeah. la- I mean, that was one of the things I was really disappointed about missing last year were all of the fantastic writing panels. Mm. Uh, thankfully, this year, I have a fantastic team of guys with me uh, on the media team, so I should hopefully have a little bit of time to myself every once in a while <laughs> to actually enjoy the convention. Last year, it was me constantly running around. Uh, I ate breakfast, I ate dinner, no time for lunch, and oh, okay. five hours of sleep. Oh, man, you forget so. the one more hour. But still, but still. I mean, um, I, I heard this from Chef Sandy from uh, Night My Night Dallas, and for his first con, he didn't went anywhere that much. He sit at the front desk attending to tickets. So, yeah, <laughs> con <laughs> management is not fun if you're doing it. <laughs> well, if you're no, doing I mean, front work is... It's less fun. Yeah, but still, but still, it's for the passion. It's for the passion. What's wrong with yeah, taking tickets, though? No, but and still. if you're doing, quote, grunt work, I, again, I don't think of anyone on the team as a grunt. We're all, again, we're all friends and family, and mm-hmm. uh, so, and we're all in this together. So I don't consider anything grunt work, but if you are, like, just, uh, say you're on line management, well, you have a schedule. Uh, mm-hmm. So you're like, oh, you work from here to here, and then you're free the rest of the time. Mm. Uh, if you're a director... You have to be on call all twenty four seven. Yeah, so he had to do that, and you know what? It's it's the passion of looking at people having fun. Th- that's the point of doing a convention, just to look see people having fun and enjoying themselves. 
Oh, yeah, and that's why I love doing it. Um, it it's also a fantastic experience. Oh, hey, if somebody sa- asks me uh, when I'm at a job interview, hey, do you have uh, experience leading a team? I get, yes, I'm leading an eight-man team right now. <laughs> but yeah, and this year, actually, um, what the media team has done, we've actually done a few new things this year. Mm. Uh, we hosted a writing contest, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. I guess you not actually uh, won. I actually okay. have all of the prizes uh, put together, uh, except the book. So uh, once we get the book done and printed up, uh, we'll be sure to get that sent out to you. I'm very excited for that because it's like the first thing that I'm... I mean, it's not It's not just because it's a prize, but it's like the first thing from a con that I'm ever going to actually receive. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's kind of like being part of it, but not really being there. Yeah, you know? I can understand. At, at, least, at least I'm there in spirit, right, mm-hmm. Tim? Oh, yes. And, uh... <laughs> Please remember me. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't forget you. And, um... Yeah, and I mean, uh, there's a blurb of your story in our con book, so hopefully people will see that and be like, oh, this sounds interesting. I want to read that. Awesome, oh, I hope so awesome. And, you know, here's the thing. I, I still want to go, but location, financials, and whatnot uh, stopping me from going. But just me helping you guys promote the convention makes me feel like, hey, at least I'm doing something for the con, and I hope people listen to this are interested in going or have purchased ticket because of my show. Yay. Yeah, you keep telling yeah. yourself that. Man. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, now, currently, um, we are past pre-registration, so mm-hmm. you can only get a ticket at the door. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, the tickets are only... Um, it's uh, $55 for all three days. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or if you can only come by for one day, uh, it's $30 for either Friday or Saturday and only 25 for Sunday. So, oh. honestly, our con prices are pretty reasonable. Mm, well, yeah, um, that is true. That is true. Like $50 for a three-day con. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Babs Con was 60 right? Uh, I believe so. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually curious what BronyCon is. Oh. Which, uh, they are a much a bigger... Oh, they actually are having a Summer Sun celebration, uh, so it's only $60 uh, for the three-day ba- badges oh, through Sunday. So what, by the time you hear this, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it'll be over. Yeah. But still, but, um, it's the thought that counts, and it's like you guys have the cheapest ticket around the convention circuit, and I, I don't think price is an issue when it comes to having fun. And, you know, it's the quality that matters, really. But yeah, I, I think that we offer a fantastic uh, value. Now, BronyCon, of course, is a much larger mm. uh, convention. I mean, uh, I believe last year, what, they they had 8,000 people? Yeah. I mean, our, our con last year was uh, a little over, t- it was uh, between twenty two and 23,000. So we, mm. we are smaller, but I think we're filling uh, a niche because, well, we're on the... Uh, we're on the West Coast, oh, while Brody Con's on the East Coast. So oh, true that, true that. It, it's hard to get uh, to both locations, uh, unless mm. you're in yeah, unless you're in Chicago like me and you're stuck pretty much in the middle. <laughs> then it's honestly, I'm actually I live closer to uh, Brony Con than every Northwest. <laughs> but now, still. I, I'm actually hoping on making it to Brony Con this year. Um, uh, to you, if. Uh, well, actually, Rolicon will be at Every Northwest, I oh. believe, uh, doing a vendor table. I believe we're doing a swap of tables. Huh. So I'm, I'm actually hoping I can be manning the Everfree Northwest uh, vendor booth uh, this year. Oh, cool. So cross-promotion. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, well, again, Brony, hey, uh, if you can only go one con, uh, go to Everfree Northwest. Mm-hmm. Haha, plug, plug. <laughs> but honestly, there are f- some great, fantastic conventions. That, like, BabsCon, just their first year, already had more people uh, at BabsCon than uh, we did at our second year. Now, we are, st- uh, the way things are looking, this mm-hmm. uh, is shaping up to be our biggest uh, convention yet. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. But no, I mean, like, BabsCon people are fantastic. I actually, oh, yeah. I, I know their uh, director of uh, no press and PR. He's a mm-hmm. fantastic guy. Mm-hmm. Um, no, oh, BronyCon, I mean, it's the original. Uh, I mean, that was back when, why do we need the conventions for this? And now, of course, I'm helping to run a convention. Indeed. BronyCon, Galicon, uh, Nightmare Nights Dallas. I mean, what? Chef Sandy is a fantastic guy, and he mm-hmm. knows his stuff about uh, doing conventions. Mm-hmm. Honestly, there are just so many great conventions out there. 
Uh, yeah, yeah who, you, honestly, who would have thought that this one fan would spawn so many conventions? I mean, around the world, and that too. Yeah, I mean, and it's just so universal. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing is with our fandom and whatever we're doing right now, it's because we want to hang out and want to meet other people who have the same interests as us, and that's cool. No, that is totally cool. Mm-hmm. And back to Ever Free, like um, you, you guys have a lot of things going on. Like, um, if I'm not mistaken, you have a section for photographers to take photos of the cosplayers. I guess we're gonna have uh, three hour-long photo shoots each day, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, we're gonna have Tori will actually be running the show there, so we'll probably have we'll have some themed shoots and mm. like some group shoots. So. Uh, I imagine the Pinkie Pie one will be very interesting with everyone bouncing around going fun, fun, fun. Oh, uh, God. And every time you get a bunch of Pinkies together, that just happens. Oh, God. If I remember last year's BronyCon, that happened. Yeah, the, the Pinky Kong line. Yeah, that happened. Fun, 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 fun. Oh, God. So what time will the photo shoot be at? And what day through what day? So on Friday and Sunday, 11 a.m., Saturday, 3.15. And it's actually in our uh, cosplay track announcement, which we released a little while ago. Mm. Uh, which uh, we did hear some people going, hey, I don't think there's enough for cosplay at the convention. Uh, so we actually uh, dedicated one person um, under our events team to be our cosplay lead. So now we have somebody dedicated to making cosplay happen. Uh, so we have our cosplay contest. Um, it's going to happen. And it's going to be a more beefed up uh, co- contest. Got to have some fantastic prizes. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, we love we love flying gift cards, tabletop air hockey, uh, or even a full pass to uh, every Northwest 2015. Ooh. We have the Iron Cosplay, where basically uh, you have three 20 minute rounds to make the best cosplay you can with the items provided. Wow, that that that's a challenge. That, that is a challenge. Oh, indeed. Uh, we have our official photo shoots, like we talked about. Uh, there's the Equestrian Plush Adventures with Design, where it's going to be uh, talking about creating you know, plushes, which mm-hmm. is a very big... I actually, I tried to get one of uh, a plush once of uh, one of my OCs mm-hmm. I, I made up. like, uh, But, yeah, so far I just have not been able to make that happen. <laughs> Yeah. You could commission one, right? Oh yeah, no, that's why men's. But um, oh, right. the really the commissioners are constantly busy because people are like, "Take my money, make me cool things." But no, man, yeah, what a horrible life that is. <laughs> um, I'm a commissioner right here. Do you make pony plush? Oh, not the plushes. No, I only do pictures. No, so you want a pony plush? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. My bad. My that's apologies. Well, I, I've also been cosplaying. Uh, cosplaying? No, I have not done any cosplaying. So uh, you have a session about how to make plushies? Is that true? If I remember right, reading. Yeah, it? I mean, it's a. It's gonna be like a one-hour panel. I believe it's one hour. Um, maybe it's two. Mm. Again, we have the events up. I could look, but that would make for <laughs> bad radio. Yeah, but but still, but, no, but still. So. If I do remember, it's how to make your own plushies and stuff. And, you know, if you do, like, sewing and stuff, this, this is awesome because this is something new I have here in um, in any event or in any con. Like, how to make your own thing, um, iron cosplay event. Yeah, it's like, not the, something that I've actually heard anyone yeah, actually yeah. teaching. Like, you know, they, they do sell the stuff, but teaching a course on how to do it, that's interesting. You see, that's yeah. interesting. Well, again, it's an hour-long panel, so you can only talk about so yeah. much. Honestly, the best thing about uh, the best way to learn is to do. So mm-hmm. you just gotta try. It. I mean, like um, before I worked on my investigations, I had never used Flash before, so I kind of just jumped in the deep end and flailed around like a <laughs> maniac for a while. But eventually, I I, I figured it out eventually. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I think it's the same in anything you do with drawing or singing or like uh, just anything creative. But I, I am interested in the photo shoot section because uh, I myself, um, as my a day job, uh, am a, uh, a freelance photographer. And looking at this, this this is cool. Like taking pictures of something you like that that is cool. And I am so jelly of the people who are going there. Yeah. Oh, that's one of the great things about just any geek convention. Doesn't matter uh, where you are. Is some of the most amazing cosplays. Like uh, I was at the Phoenix Comic Con last year. 
and I saw some uh, just I, this Garrus from Mass Effect. Oh, uh, that's cool. Uh, play. So, well, obviously, if if I can admit something, if there's anything I'm more of a fan of than uh, now the, the MLP, it would have to be Mass Effect. Oh yeah, I, I love it. I was so disappointed when all we had was like two minutes of Talking Heads at mm. uh, this year's um, E3 about uh, Mass Effect 4. It's just some Talking Heads and some stills and such. Uh, yeah. And they spent like half the time talking about a new IP. I'm like, no, give me more <laughs> Mass Effect. I w- <laughs> Honestly, I really hope in uh, the next Mass Effect 4, whatever they call it, uh, that I'll be able to like uh, play something besides human. I want to be a Turian or a Krogan or something. Yeah. That, that but, would be fun, that would be fun. But yeah, that's a bit off topic. So, But yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, we also have, uh, besides just uh, learning a bit about making plushes and learning about plush design, we also have a Stitch in Time, which will be a crash course in making a cosplay. One of uh-huh. the great things about MLP cosplay, you can make it as simple or as complex as you want. I mean, you, it can be as simple as having a specific outfit. Mm. I mean, like, uh, if you want to do a, a Twilight, all you need is, like, a sweat, uh, maybe like a purple sweater vest and some um, semi ca- business casual clothes. I mean, you can do that. Very, you can do that very easily, up until we have people uh, fur suiting. Oh yeah. Um, I actually saw again Phoenix Comic Con. Uh, I saw, saw some fan, a Discord uh, fur suit, and I thought it was fantastic. And there was also uh, at last year's at Free Northwest. This fantastic shining armor, oh. uh, who, yeah, who had a cadence like, pit, like throw pillow, as in it's like a flat pillow that you could throw it. <laughs> that is cool. No, uh, the f- great thing is uh, Andrew Francis, the VA for shining armor, actually uh, met up with him, I believe, and yeah. uh, got to and got to throw cadence. <laughs> uh, legit, yo. But I'll say one of the cosplays I'm really looking forward to, um, Screwball from uh, Manlius Brony. Oh, what uh, is he doing? Be, he's doing Good King Samba from the comics. Oh, that, 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 that is going to be cool. I know. I think it's going to be fantastic. I just... I, have you been reading the comics? Oh, oh I have. I have. And I am enjoying it. I'm yeah, still I'm, getting into that. I, honestly, I, I typically wait until, like, the next... Uh, Issue was out, so I can get it for like half, half price. I, I get it from uh, Comicsology, so the newest one is like four bucks. Uh, the previous version, the previous ones are two bucks. Oh, really? No. Um, but yeah, so I got, I I bought the uh, first one, and then I waited for the next suit to come out. I bought the second one. I'm like, oh, I have to know what happened, so I bought the third one. <laughs> you want it now? 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 Price. Yeah, pretty, well, pretty much, honestly. I mean, I, I like the show, but it's still... Eh, they can only do so much with it. The comics are really... Oh, yeah. the, mm-hmm. I think are the best thing. Oh, true that, honestly, true that. Honestly, I mean, I'm not even that big into the show these days. Um, oh, I still watch, I still enjoy it, but... And just... Uh, especially the season finale uh, DBZ fight. Oh, and, yeah. That was fantastic. Yeah, that, that I, was awesome. I, I was laughing through that because I was like... <laughs> Oh, I can't believe they did that. <laughs> and it that was fantastic. But, oh, that's true, that's true. But yeah, so... No, they... Honestly, they are just doing some fantastic things with uh, the material in the comics. Uh, mm. Some of them are hit and miss. Uh, like the Rainbow Dash micro, se- uh, micro series. Yeah. I, was, I don't think that was uh, that fantastic. Mm, um, true. I, it, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. But yeah, I mean, other ones are completely fantastic. Like uh, the first four or the current arc. Uh, I guess it's just it really gives us let's get some characterization. Mm. And, the the uh, comics are awesome, and oh, you you guys, if you do have a, if you do manage to make a 2015 Everything of Us, you should call the comic people on. That would, that would be awesome. We have some comic people on. Ooh, shows me what I know. <laughs> Yeah, let me go ahead and just quickly go over our guests. Uh, from the comics, we have Georgia Ball and Heather Nuffer, uh, who are comic book writers. Mm. Uh, Georgia Ball did the micro number eight, which I believe was the Celestial one. Uh, and Heather Nuffer did uh, MLP five. issues five through eight and 13 through 16. Ooh, shows me what I know. Like, cool. You, you, wow. I, I am speechless. Like, 
oh man, this, uh, I, I wish I bought a physical copy so I could ask them to sign it because it would be awkward for them to sign my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let me go ahead and go. We have uh, four other guests and we are, as I mentioned, we have another one that we haven't announced yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so we have, uh, I'm so bad at, I, I'm, when it's... I meet her uh, at the con, I'll be like, how do you properly say your name? Because uh, I'm, I've been on many podcasts where I just butcher it, but uh, Gilda's VA, Marie uh, Hendricks. Yeah, Marquee Mar- Mar- Hendricks, if I remember Mar- right. Rixie or something. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so bad with names. Forgive me. Know them feels. <laughs> yeah, we have Michael Dobson. He is Bulk Biceps VA, and this is actually going to be his first convention, uh, like MLP Con. And he's done a lot of other stuff. If I remember right, he's also Nappa from Dragon Ball Z's Ocean Dub. God he might it, be, yeah. Nappa. Yeah, but c- clearly his defining role is bulk biceps. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I, I believe he's but Nappa, he, but... He, he sounds like he could be, all right? Let's, but yeah, no... Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, he, he's on Star, uh, Starscream and Transformers, Cobra oh. Commander in G.I. Joe. Wait, 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 he's Starscream? I thought that was uh, Kenny... Uh... No, this is the traditional one, the old one. I'm Kenny. Oh, all right. The, from the eighties, because remember during oh, the eighties, he's 80s, been around for a while, huh? Yeah, yeah. During oh, yeah, the eighties, yeah. yeah. uh, he's done Leonardo for TM and uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, he was <laughs> Batman in Batman Black and White. So, not holy again, mother he's... of goodness! Again, yeah, again, he... his defining role is definitely bug biceps. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stand up like Batman. <laughs> no, I was a pony man. <laughs> yeah. No, no. That, so I, honestly, I mean. It's surprising how small the VA community actually is. So, I mean, you get somebody who's done, uh, who's come on uh, MLP, they've done a lot of stuff. I mean, they may now have, like, a huge following because of this uh, Mm -hmm. one show. But, again, these are professionals, and they are just fantastic, and they do tons of shows. Mm, True. Yeah. um, So, besides Michael Dobson, we also have Rebecca Shoyshut, who is... Uh, Sunset Shimmer and Twilight Sparkle's singing voice. Mm-hmm. And the really cool thing, um, as she sings for Twilight, uh, she will also be singing at Pony Stop. Oh, wow, that's cool. When's her time slot, for those who are curious? Friday night at 8 p.m. We actually ju- recently released our Pony Stock lineup. Uh, we have 22 musicians. Let me just quickly list them. Uh, for Everfree Browning, Atomic Jack, Aviators, Brony Mike, Dapper Jack, uh, Don the Vore and the Kiwi Marks, Your Beat Broman, uh, Fan 3 and uh, Fan Ning, or Fan 3 Ning. However, you probably say, I'm going to have to ask him to how to say it. <laughs> All right. Gernika, Hey Las Foss. Actually, funny thing, I knew Las Foss before uh, this whole Broly thing. Oh, that's uh, cool. I, I was actually his uh, RA in college. Mmm. Whoa. Awesome. Yeah, again, just. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff Burgess and the Bad Mayors, Kella Bobella, Michael A, Next Gen, uh, P1K, uh, Saigoth and the Bagpipe Browning, mm-hmm. uh, Sherzo and Brightside, Samores, Stars in Autumn, Tarby, that son of a Mitch, mm-hmm. and Tombstone. Yay, wow, you have a lot of awesome people coming in. Wow. Uh, like, oh, yeah, yeah, we have. Okay. The music scene is one of the, again, it's just one of the coolest things mm-hmm, mm-hmm. about this. Well, this community overall is just very cool because it's very creative. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have several panels about, uh, let me see, yeah, we're going to have like a sing along is magic panel. Uh, we're going to have an orchestral soundtrack musicians panel. We're going to ha- actually have something for the kids with the Every Northwest Full Dance. Every Northwest is completely family friendly. We are a PG convention. Mm-hmm. Um, so we definitely, uh, again, we have more, you know, young, um, teens and young adults and adults than, you know, kids. But I think we had like 200 children last year, uh, attend and, uh, kids 12 and under actually get in for free. So, hey, if you, yeah, if you're an adult and you have, uh, some kids yourself or some family members, just, uh, pick up a ticket and, uh, they give in for free. So get family out in. I do understand you also have Kathy Westlock coming, right? Yes, I was about to get to her. Kathy mm. um, Westlock, which obviously spiked the dragon, and Mare Mare. 
Mm, and also, if I remember, she's also um, Coco Pomel. Uh, I believe so. Was she? Was um, she though? Yeah, if I understand I right, that. I heard. But yeah, buzzing, I mean, yeah, like in everything. I mean, she's done a lot of stuff. Like she was young Trunks in Dragon Ball Z. Oh yeah, uh, oh. shampoo in Ramba One. What? Oh man, that, that, I tell oh. you what, though, all these voice, uh, you know, all these voice artists, they're very, very underappreciated. In... Mm, yeah, that's be true. That's be true. Yeah. Not as much well, as I mean, animators are. Uh, um, honestly, yeah. I, uh, I, th- I think every everyone is <laughs> underappreciated. I, who, who gets all the credit? Like seriously, in 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 a in a the production, characters. in a show, in a movie, well, who gets all the credit? Director. But no, I mean, like, uh, I-, I can see where why people might think that, because they're like, oh, they just talk, and that's all they do. But they, they don't really quite understand um, well, it's, it's like, just how that goes, mm-hmm. uh, uh, just how complicated and hard it actually is. Oh, that'd be true. I mean, I've, tra- I, I've mentioned a couple of times I work with the fan game Milo Investigations. Mm-hmm. I've tried a couple, I've tried auditioning for a couple of the uh, voice roles as well, and I'm just terrible. I cannot... <laughs> Uh, this is my normal talking voice, and I sound horrendous. <laughs> uh, it's, it's cool, man. It's cool. As long as we can understand right. you. I uh, know, uh, no. Everyone hates the sound of their own voice. So I. Everyone hates the sound of their own voice, but that's why you ask other people. <laughs> That'd be yes. true. Yeah, yeah, I love my uh, voice. That's why my newscaster here. I, I'm help. We actually, again, just on the tangent, just uh, my investigations were currently going through VA editions for our second case. Ooh. And, like, some of the... I mean, it just inundated with uh, VA editions because people are like, oh, I have a mic? I can totally do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And, no, some of you can't. <laughs> just, yeah. Just no... It's a, little, uh, it's a little bit more than that. The process is pretty... Um, painstaking. It's difficult. It's, uh, it's had, a lot different. This one guy was eating chips while he was auditioning. Like, no, why are you, are you doing this? No, I'm no. not kidding. That that, that happened. Is, Somebody that was eating fantastic. chips. Uh, that is so funny. Yeah. And uh, they didn't even get the voice anywhere close. It was just mm. like they, they just started talking instead of trying to make the voice. Oh boy. Like, no. uh, I mean, just like, uh, yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, I, I still think I, I do a very good hard. Princess Celestia. No, 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 no. We're not going to bring that up again. Well, I mean, while we're tangentializing anyway, I, li- um, I actually like to go ahead and bring up... Uh, we were talking earlier about how uh, we've expanded um, what, where we are on social media. Oh, um, for which one? Um, my Little yeah, Investigation well, or for Every Free oh, Northwest? No, no, no. Every Free Northwest. Uh, no. <laughs> but yeah, um, with Every Free Northwest, I, I mentioned the writing uh, contest. Uh, we also have an art contest. First time we've had a pre-con art contest as mm. well. Um, but really cool this year. Uh, we actually have also expanded into DeviantArt. We have oh. a DeviantArt account and group. DeviantArt.com slash EverfreeNW for the account and Everfree Northwest uh, for the uh, group. And we also have a fan, a fan fiction account now. Which I'm subscribed to. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, um, Everfree Anything. Northwest. That's just filmfiction.net slash user slash Everfree Northwest. Uh, yeah, this is... Uh, we actually currently have 90 followers. Oh, that's cool. I mean, um, people who ha- who have it don't know or... Yeah, who don't know or want to know, go to their website and they have a button link for all the media. Like, currently there's six, which is Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, DeviantArt, Tumblr, and Face. Film fiction, yeah, sorry. The, the color threw me off. <laughs> right. Uh, maybe we should edit that color a bit uh, to make it more differential. But yeah, I mean, speaking of writing, um, we just... I, I think it's not an exaggeration, exaggeration to say that every Northwest, we have the strongest writing track of any MLP fan convention. Oh yeah, that'd be true, that'd be true. I think we started this trend last year, and we're keeping it going this year with uh, Pico Pie. Mm-hmm. Um, he was now our lead of the uh, of uh, our writing track. Um, yeah, we actually have over a dozen. Uh, yeah, basically have eight writing panels, four workshops in two formats, uh, mm-hmm. Iron Author competition, and fourteen panelists. So oh. uh, let me just go ahead. I'll briefly go over uh, what we're gonna have. We're gonna have the fanfic chillouts. Mm-hmm. So basically, just a meet up and hang out with. No readers and writers of fan fiction. Fan fiction, the community, and you, um, which is it's going to talk about how to reach out and interact with the fan fiction community. 
Um, we got mastering specific topics, um, how to write a villain, the redemption of evil, mm. how to write a hero, how to write a good comedy, and how to write a good romance. I actually got, I'm trying to write a romance right now, so <laughs> I, I really hope I can get into that panel. Uh, we also have some high-end discussions, making the big time. Uh, so basically, try how to get yourself noticed, uh, symbolism mm. and literary devices, and literary merit. Oh. So we have our Iron Author competition, basically two hours to write up to 2,500 words based on a couple of prompts. And it's kind of like the Iron Chef competition where you have to make a meal and they give you like, and so uh, now we have, as the special ingredient, bees! What? Because... Not the bees! <laughs> And uh, you have to incorporate bees into your dish or something. Um, that sounds fun. Oh yeah, it's, uh, and, it uh, sounds productive, which is something a lot of um, you know other cons don't really. Mm. Do. I mean, as as far as I see, not that I've really been to any, but I read about a few of them, and I yeah. like it when people, you know, go out of their way to not only just showcase but also to teach. Mm. Teaching is. Important, right? Yeah, true that, true that. Yeah. Um, the last con I went to, they, we have this one cosplayer. He dressed up as a big giant Gundam and he did a panel on how did he did his stuff and the materials and how to do his stuff. And that was fun and all, but I couldn't hang out there because I was the photographer. And yeah, um, for you lucky people who are going to Everfree Northwest, I mean, do go in, sit down and take a listen to what they have to say because... And learn might, something. Yeah, learn something. Come out with it armed but with yeah, the tools necessary to start only, your own stuff. But yeah, if you can only do one thing uh, from our writing track, I would recommend the uh, Hangout. Because, again, it's just you hanging out with a bunch of really cool people. And mm -hmm. just, uh, us. again, it was one of the few things I actually got to do oh. uh, last year. Um, and it was fantastic. It was one of my favorite moments. Oh. And if I'm looking at the film fiction hangout section, it's from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. So you have yep. a lot of time to hang out with those writers and get to know them and understand how they work. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. On top of just the hangout, everything else, uh, we also have uh, critiques, actually. Um, hmm. we, have two we have actually two versions of critiques. A peer review and critique workshop, and a open reading and critique. So, if you have some stuff you want to bring, um, yeah, go ahead and bring it, and get some opinions on it. Um, one of the best things about um, to get better at writing is to just uh, showcase some of your stuff and be like, "Hey, so does this work? Does this not work?" And get some opinions. Yeah, and also don't be pushy because you you're not the only one that he's going to review. So don't be pushy and don't take it negatively because yeah, he might not be in the mood but still, um, please. Yeah, one of the worst things for anybody who's creative is not being able to take criticism. Mm -hmm. um, I remember like I had this one friend who was trying to do art and I would offer like a uh, criticism. It's like, no, it's my style. I'm like, no, your style is you stink. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to get, you have to be good before you can break things and uh, develop a style. Um, again, de developing a style is just a lot of practice and trying new things out. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's like uh, if you have like terrible proportions, you're like, this is my style. Like, you have to establish yourself before you can make a style. Like, yeah, uh, before you can like really do uh, weird things and be like, and honestly, if you can make, if you can like uh, break the anatomy but still make it look fan like make it look good, then fine. His just look. Terrible. Mm, uh, he, again, he really he needed to take some anatomy lessons. But yeah, I mean, I, I offered constructive criticism. Well, may, try this, maybe this, uh, maybe uh, read this book on anatomy. Mm -hmm. And he bit my head off about it. Oh, so yeah. I stopped you no know, trying to help him. Mm. So for any people who wants to get their reviews um, looked at by those fan fiction writers who know what they're doing, please bear in mind they might be off-putting at first but you know just take it with yeah. a full spoon of salt it's, as they it's say it's rough it's rough i'm gonna speak yeah. from my personal um experience as well because i also on my side of the end of uh, things on filmfic i also uh sometimes you know do criticisms for people who do ask and the first thing i tell them is that 
it's not going to be it's probably not going to be as gentle as you think it as you think it will be because the best way to learn is if you can you know suck it up mm-hmm. and have someone be incredibly honest and harsh about your piece it's what i expect when people criticize what i do and it's the kind of criticism that i give because holding hands can be nice but it doesn't really you know get to the problems it doesn't really let people learn so mm. in order to really improve yourself you have to understand where you stand mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the only way where you can understand where you stand is if you just understand your shed a little bit of your pride mm. and be humble about what you do and where you know you can improve and the things that you think you can work on mm-hmm. be proud right, of and- what be proud of what you have and be proud of what you can already do but never ever think that just because you're good at something you can't be better i think oh, that's true that true yeah that's yeah. it yeah and on the flip side i mean as a, cri- a critic you need to provide constructive criticism so you can't just say oh this stinks and leave it at that oh, oh, I hate you have thing. to elaborate and also well don't be a jerk about it. like oh. um, yeah i mean you, being blunt and being yeah, a that, jerk are completely different that, things. Yeah, exactly, Tim. That's that's exactly the thing. There's a difference between actually providing harsh criticism and just being an ass. Because there are a lot of people who are, you know, are asses. Especially if you read comments on YouTube, anything YouTube and uh, film fake, where people actually, you know, there are some people who who pretend to give. I mean, well, not pretend, but they think they're giving feedback, and they say. This sucks. Go and kill yourself. You know, I've actually read <laughs> comments like that before. Not on my stuff. Thank, thank goodness. But um, I've seen things like that before. And they don't help. Mm. So one of the things that I actually ask, and I get asked this a lot by a lot of people, um, how do you take criticism, right? Mm-hmm. How do you learn? And my my answer to that is that from the start, you have to learn how to distinguish between what is going to be good for you as criticism and what is actually just bad. Because when I say good and bad criticism, I don't actually mean that if they're, you know, if they're saying good things about you, then it's good. If they're saying bad things, then then it's bad. That's not really true. What it is, is that, is it constructive or not? Mm. Because if they're saying, oh, this is the best thing I ever wrote, as opposed to, uh, this sucks, you should delete everything. They both don't help. Even though one of them, yeah, okay, they boost the ego, you know, they make you feel better because you think you've been doing a good job. But they don't help because all they're saying is that I liked it. But people who really give good criticism are the kind of people who actually say why they like it, for what reasons, also why they hate it, what didn't work, where they think it could be improved, and what they think shouldn't be changed. This applies to everything, writing, art, you know, everything about that. I like this bits here. This is what you can do to improve yourself. That's good criticism. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bad criticism is just things like, this looks great or this looks terrible because it doesn't eventually nope. help you develop your style. It doesn't actually help you pay attention to what, you know, what you're doing that's good or bad, you know? Right. And uh, honestly, like... Uh... Uh, false praise can actually be very detrimental. Um, it is, it is. Yeah, I, I've read some stories on film fiction that, like, uh, it's gotten like a ton of upvotes. Like, yeah, this is great. And I read, I'm like, this is not good. I mean, usually it's not complete garbage, but it's usually this is the the writing is boring, and I don't understand what's going on. I mean, why why do so many people like this? There's a lot um, of appeal in, uh, you know, people upvoting in, in Finfic has always been a, a big, you know, issue since the start of it um, because of the fact that people just upvote what they support and people downvote what oh, they yeah. like. I myself have a lot of downvotes for my stories and it's got nothing to do, nothing to do with quality. It's just, I write things like, you know, uh, I write dark stuff, horror, I like writing horror, I like writing uh, certain pairings in, you know, ships. And if People just don't like it. They will they won't even bother reading. They'll just downvote your story. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a fan of, you know, dark or gore, and I'm not big into the... At least the main three shipping. I mean, honestly, mm. I mean, like, a, no, something cute, like a Spike with, like, a Sweetie Belle or something. Like, that's kind of cute for... <laughs> I, I love Celestia with Discord, or, although now, now with... Uh, Sombra, like Good King Sombra as well. I think that's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so like, 
there are some pairings that I'm like, okay, I can see this work, but mm-hmm. like main six, main six kind of stuff, not my cup of tea. But I just like, okay, I'll just skip that over. I won't read it. Yeah, I mean, with, with me personally, with the upvote on Filmfic, I read what's recommended to me. I'll read it finish. If I like it, I'll upvote it and put it in my favorites. If I don't like it, I'll just don't bother because why would you want to downvote it? Because other people might enjoy it. So, yeah. Well, well, I'm Every okay once with in a while, downloading stuff as long as they give a reason. You know what I mean? Like you have your opinion. Like a, a bad opinion is still an opinion. If you don't like something, maybe there's something to be learned from that, right? Mm, true. I never say like don't ever downvote my stuff. I I. But what I like is if you downvote it, prepare to back yourself up. Mm-hmm. Don't just downvote it because I don't like the premise or I don't like the shipping. That has nothing to do with if the story is worth reading or not. You know, it's just a personal dislike, and that's not what the upvotes and the downvotes should be about. I do understand, Kitsu. With, with me, like I ignore the downvote because you know, I didn't like this. I didn't like the way he wrote the story, but other people do. I, I didn't like the structure of the story, but other people do. So that's me, and I think we're digressing a lot from the original topic of this chat. <laughs> yes, we are. I'm sorry. Yeah, still, but still, that's what happens when you have two reviewers on here. <laughs> Can I read my fan fiction now? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, but a- anywho, Tim, you um, can read. You can read my fan fiction if you want, wrong. Yay! I'm no. okay with that. <laughs> uh, not life. But a- they're anywho, all, they're all pretty terrible. Uh, oh no. But anywho, Tim, uh, we've been talking about um, everything of West, but where is it? We we forgot to mention that. It's in America. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so everything of West. It's in America. <laughs> <laughs> the most American place you can be. <laughs> so America. That, no, oh wait, uh, not that America. I mean, no, there's probably a lot of burger places where we can eat way too much food and get incredibly fat, but I don't think there are many guns, so... <laughs> right. I guess it's not that America. Ha right. <laughs> Politics. But no, um, Every Northwest is in Seattle, Washington. Mm. Uh, so it's right close, actually, uh, to... Uh, it's pretty close to Vancouver, so it's by Canada, actually. Yeah, so our Canadian friends can definitely uh, t- pop on down and join us. Yay! Do, go, go there and have fun. Like, you, if I remember right, there's also TrotCon or... Yeah, TrotCon in Canada. So, yeah, still, you can go to two yeah, conventions. Like and, yeah, Brony Can. Oh, yeah, there's two. All right. Yeah, okay, there's a lot. Hey, there's a lot of conventions anywhere you go. Except, like, the Midwest. There's, like, ah, no yeah. conventions in the Midwest or, like... A, down in Georgia or Florida or something. If people from, let's just say, Canada come around, where can they stay? Because I do see a hotel here and any discount code. Well, actually, uh, that hotel has been uh, filled up for a while. Uh, Uh, But there's... The cool thing about being close to the airport is there are a ton of hotels all over the place. hmm. I mean, just across the street is the Clarion, and a little further on is the Holiday Inn. (laughs) I believe both of those are still open. And even if they aren't, I mean... Honestly, there are just a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, uh, hotels you can find just in that area. Well, because again, lots oh. of uh, flight traffic, so uh, people getting off the plane, um, be like, I need to find a hotel. Find a hotel near the uh, airport. So, yeah, and uh, there's actually a shuttle uh, for the Holiday Inn. Uh, not Holiday Inn. I'm, I meant the Hilton. So if you have a room at the Hilton. Um, and you're flying in, uh, you actually can get a shuttle to and from the airport. Oh. If you can afford to stay at the Hilton, I don't think you need the shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but hey, I will do anything to save a buck. Tim, I, I am a, can I stay I, at your house? <laughs> if I came well, down. I live in Chicago, so that's It's okay. Far the commute the would be a little bit <laughs> long, but... You know? Yeah. Sure, you can sleep on the couch. Cool. See, Tim's a nice guy. It's this kind of people who's running the con, so you know it's going to be friendly and inviting and warm. Yeah. I hope that spot by the couch is also warm. <laughs> but, well, but... My, my home actually is over 100 years old and doesn't have AC. So, that yeah, is, yeah, it's summer here sounds, and it's kind of warm. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's the thought that counts. Yes, indeed. But, but anywho, um, th- this is all fun. Like, oh, I am jealous of you people who are going, like, really, really jealous. Like, Norman, uh, you've mentioned, Norman. What? You've mentioned. I know! I am! Uh. I am so jealous, I cannot find the words to describe my jealousy. <laughs> uh, I am so jelly. Indeed. Like, uh, 
that one guy in that one song. <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> ah, reference. I remember that one. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, um, remember no. the, uh... I, I only know one song about jealousy, and I think it's not the same one. No, Jelly. <laughs> Je- no, oh, I, right. I said so, Jelly. Remember, uh, I think it was season two, the uh, the Valentine's episode with... Uh, Oh, oh yeah. yeah, the Hearts and Hoops song with the mm. oh, Jelly Pony. Uh, yeah. Yep. That guy. That who, guy. Is... Who made the Magusa face at the end? Of, like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> seriously, seriously. He likes jelly. I mean, who am I to judge him for liking jelly? Yeah. A lot. Of I like jelly. Can judge? No, not, not that, that much. much. But... Would you do? Would you do? Would you submerge yourself in a giant <laughs> glass jar of jelly and put on that face? Would you do that? Yes. I would, personally, uh, I would do that. Uh, All right, honestly, I might do it just to be like, what would it be like to be in a huge thing of jelly? Yeah, me. Uh, I, no I, mean, I would do. That. I would do it for science. <laughs> what, not, what? What possible scientific conclusion could you come from? Like, okay, it feels squishy. Is that? Is that the only <laughs> determination? Science. That you... Science doesn't work for It's not about why. It's about science. It's about why not. In, indeed. But exactly. anywho, references. Exactly. That is. Really <sighs> Anywho, we, we've... Uh, I, uh, uh, I'm sorry, now I'm just curious about that. Yeah, I, I'm very curious, and I'm the kind of guy that I wonder what it'd be like to get shot, okay? Just give you an idea. I'm uh, curious about over the top, but okay. It's okay. probably but, but... not pleasant. <laughs> but right, anyway. that... Look, sorry. Tim, I tell you what, come see me after the show, right? We will ask you. <laughs> but but anywho, we, we've that out of the way... Um, Tim, th- thank you for being on, and I I don't think we can talk anything more without anything new because what we've talked about here is like almost everything to do with Everfree Northwest, like how hype I am, like how hype you are, how everyone is so, so excited. Pardon? I know I'm so very excited. Well, uh, but yeah, let me go ahead and just mention a couple of things. I think All we right. talked about the game rooms, Mm-mm-mm. um, a bit electronic and tabletop, and uh, did we did I talk about Pony Finder being there? Oh yes, we did, we did. Oh, okay, good. Just want to make. Yeah, again, they've been fantastic. We actually had a uh, tabletop game online with them uh, a few days oh, ago. Uh, that was fun. Oh, I'm but so yeah, jelly. Um, let's see. Our art room is going to be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, there's still uh, you still have until the 27th to get into the PMV contest, the PMV Pony Video Contest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's still going on. Uh, it ends on the 27th. Uh, we are lacking in uh, Pony Videos, actually. Oh. So f- right now... Uh, it's Mark. It's right. We have a bunch of PMVs. Need some more pony videos uh, to oh, go yeah. with them, and you can submit for both. You can submit two of each. Oh, cool! So, awesome, awesome. Yep. And uh, as long as you create these bef- on or after April April twenty uh, April fifteenth, uh, you can submit th- uh, submit them. So if you've already made a uh, PMV or pony video at- on or after that date, um, April fourteenth. Mm-hmm. Uh, 15th, 2014, some, um, somebody actually asked, oh, um, would after April 15th, 2013 work? But, uh, so I, I've learned from running this contest, from running contests is you have to be very clear. <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd um, be true. <laughs> but yeah, so definitely we could uh, do some more fantastic submissions. Uh, our art track um, and gaming track announcements should be coming out soon, as well as our uh, guest announcements. So we still have stuff to announce. And oh. again, at Free Northwest, it's going to be a fantastic convention. If you can make it out, I, I urge you to. But honestly, like, um, any Pony Con is like, it's just a great ball of fun. You're just Mm-mm. hanging out with people that you share a common interest. I mean, make friends with the guy you're in line with. Be like, hey, who's your favorite pony? And then you could just <laughs> Like, instant friendship. Tim, them be fighting words. <laughs> yeah, I think it's easier to start wars by asking people. <laughs> Your favorite well, pony. Well, what do you mean, Rarity? Uh... <laughs> what? We can no longer be friends. Ever. No. Ever. Yeah, honestly, honestly, this is my opinion. If somebody gets, like, really angry at you because your favorite pony is this one pony, like, if I said my favorite pony was the last year, a Luna guy was like, oh, we can't show. be friends now. Like, then, uh, it's an easy way to be like, oh, maybe that, that friendship wouldn't work. Honestly, you can't take it too serious. Says the guy who's uh, written some fanfic, um, ru- helps run the convention, 
and uh, does animations for a fan mm-hmm. game, you re- you can't take um, it too seriously yeah. because it, it's a show about multicolored poses. Yeah, I mean when you, we, it is is a good it's a good icebreaker to ask what's your favorite pony. But from that point on, you move to other things like what kind of show you watch on TV besides the ponies. Because well, there's a lot of shows out there. Or what kind of game you like to play. And trust I like me, Idol Master. Uh, okay, yeah, Idol Master is good. But anywho, um, there, there's a lot of ways. Like starting off yeah. with, what's your favorite pony is a good icebreaker question. So, um, then be fighting words, but please don't go overboard by saying your pony sucks or something. Dude, it's a con. Anyone who's gonna be there is gonna be probably a pretty cool guy. Yeah, true that, true that. But yeah, exactly. And again, in the end, Africa Northwest is just a great excuse. So, yeah, yeah true, yeah. true, true. A great excuse to get together and just have a fantastic time. Yep, yep. I mean, if I was there, like, you could just talk to me what's your favorite pony and uh, I'll respond and we, we'll have a good discussion. But since I'm not there, you could just email me. I, I'm sad. I'll ask you here, Norman. What's your favorite pony? Fluttershy? Well, you're wrong. Foot <laughs> uh, table. Oh, we need we need uh, a virtual I am we need a, a virtual fan. table flip. You're wrong. Uh, but anywho, um, Tim, uh, is there anything more we should know about Everfree besides the location and what's going on and how fantastic it's going to be? Um, oh, mm-hmm. no, I, I think we've I think we have pretty much got everything. Yep, yep, I mean, I, I, we've talked about all of the uh, track announcements out, our guests, uh, location. I've uh, mentioned uh, announcements that should be coming up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, um. If you're going to Everfree Northwest and you still want to donate something for the charity auction, you can donate something at the con itself. Oh, so for example, if I want to donate my collection of vinyl ponies from Funko, I could do that? If you're at the convention itself. Mm. Uh, if you like uh, shipping uh, stuff uh, for the convention, uh, the sign-ups uh, for that ended on the um, oh. 15th. So I'm, I'm sorry. In that, uh, in that way, it's closed. I'm saying it's still open if oh, you're at physically the at the convention. Oh, so what do or what can we donate? Like, for example, because uh, I, this is for first time me hearing something, I didn't first time asking something like this. Anything really, um, Anything. As, as long as it's PG rated. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so, I mean, I'm no people... <laughs> mm-hmm. If it's friendly or family safe, I, I guess there's no problem to it, right? It'll be a big. Yeah, I mean, like uh, when you talk about that cadence pillow earlier, I mean. Something like that would be adorable to be in the... Uh, yeah, to have, to have. I mean, option, something, yeah, something like... safe, something safe, yeah. Well, if you want pillows, exactly. you got this great big collection yeah. of uh, adult Dakimaku. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> They're all no. lined up against... Mama. No, no, no. Kitsu, kitsu, bad kitsu. I'm going to get you a newspaper, no. So, anyway, um, if if uh, if I'm not mistaken, any Tim, uh, they can still submit their... Uh, donations or charity things at the door, right? Yeah, as long as uh, you get to uh, ever, as long as you can physically be at Everfree Northwest mm-hmm. with the donated donation item, you can still donate at the convention itself. Uh-huh. So I, I'm curious. I'm curious if someone goes to like all the VAs or all your guests and asks them to sign something. When is there a limit for them to submit their stuff? I actually don't know what the limit is on um, on at con donation. Mm. I'd have to talk to our charity, uh, our director of charity. But uh, they would actually go in part of the last roundup silent auction. Uh-huh. Uh, we actually are including a silent auction this year along with the uh, charity auction. And yeah, so uh, you probably want to get it in as quick as possible uh, yeah. uh, just so it can have the most exposure as possible. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's also a good thing to think about. So if any of you guys who are attending and thinking about doing what I just said, um, go talk to the head charity guy and explain what you want to do. So at least you have something planned with the person. So um, at least you get something. And yeah, it looks like the live charity auction is on Saturday at uh, 3.30 hmm. and it runs for two hours. So yeah, you probably want to get it in by Friday or at the very early, at the latest Saturday morning. Yeah, uh, yeah. Also, I, I almost forgot about this part as well. We actually... Uh, a cool thing that we're doing uh, this year with help from actually the University of Wisconsin uh, cosplay uh, group, mm-hmm. they actually will be coming to run a cosplay repair station. So oh. say like a button comes off on your cosplay or you get a tear or something, just take it to the cosplay uh, repair station and they will fix it up for you. So Tim, you, you did manage to get the cosplay doctor there. Oh, 
Yay! Yeah, we have a cosplay doctor. I will actually probably have several. Yay! And all they're going to be dressed as rarity. It's, it's a whole triage unit. <laughs> Uh, yay! That's awesome, man. That's awesome because, uh, like I said before, those cosplayers need the doctors. <laughs> Indeed. But, um, but yeah, I think honestly, there's probably one or two things I may be uh, forgetting. But honestly, there's just so much going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, it's just a fantastic, fantastic time, and I just urge anyone that can to come on by, and we would love to have you. Oh, awesome, awesome, and. Like I said, if I wish I had the financial... You know, I'm so jelly of you people. But anywho, uh, if we miss anything or if you guys miss anything or want to know, just go to their website, which is everfreenw.com and check it out there. They have all the information there. So anywho, um, thank you, Tim, once again for coming on and, well, shading, shading light on the con and getting us hyped. Hey, my pleasure. Ah, I'm so hyped right now. Ah, I can stand it. So much hype. <laughs> Yay. Oh, I'm down, Norman. You need the hose again. <laughs> all right, all right. But anywho, um, let's move on to the next topic. Next topic is shoutouts. And uh, my first shoutout goes to you, Tim. And thank you for being on. And thank you for, well, talking about Everfree. Hey, my pleasure. Y'all have a good one. Will do, will do. And my second shoutout goes to Everfree Northwest itself. Thank you for picking us as one of your outlet for spreading the news. Like, that's just awesome. That's just awesome. And also to Rom and Kitsu, thank you for being on and, well, just just backing me up. My pleasure. Whatever you say, boss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Rom, what about you? Shout outs. As usual, I'd like to shout out for all you guys. Thanks you for being, for letting me be here. Shout out to my mom. Hi, mom. I'm still a newscaster. I'm not Yay. fired yet. <laughs> and I would like to thank the Academy. Okay. We're moving on. Kitsu, what about you? I I don't have any shout out this week because I've run out of people that I know. <laughs> what about uh, us? I I think I've shouted out to you before at one previous point, but if <laughs> not then okay, I'll shout out to everyone here right now with me. Rom for being cool and Tim, thanks for coming because it's always nice to have you on and you're a cool guy and I like when you talk about <laughs> stuff. Yay. And to this guy called Norman, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I feel that. Out. And, and Tim, shout outs anything? Yeah, shout out to everybody at the convention, all the staff, and all of our uh, soon to be attendees. Ooh. And uh, shout out over also to the Milo Investigations guys. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna, yeah, we're going to be, uh, we've started working on case two already, so that should be fun. Oh. And uh, yeah, uh, that should do it for me. Oh, I can't wait to play case two. Oh, getting so hyped. <laughs> So, anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can reach us at the MBS show at gmail.com. And if you would like to reach us personally, links are in the show notes. So, also, you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. And, sweetie, what we'll just tweet about stuff related to the show or her feelings towards the show and editing this show. And as for me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about stuff that interests me and whatever tickles my fancy. And Rom? You can find me at Twitter at Romwald at twitter.com slash romwald 69 or you can ask my OCR question ask jitterylines.tumblr.com Awesome. And Kitsu, where can they find you? Usually you can't. Ah. Uh, dun dun dun! I hide away the shadows. But how would people read your fancy comments? Well, you can Find me on filmfiction.com slash user slash kidsinerisu if you ever want to read anything that I have written. And if you want to in touch, that's probably the best place to get me because I am scared of technology and I don't have Twitter or Facebook or anything like that. Okay. So, Mr. Grumpy Pants. And I'm just Tim. one of those people. Mm-hmm. And Tim, when can I find you? Uh, you can find me at on Twitter at, at Mr. Pony Tim. Uh, I also have a Tumblr that I haven't used in about a year. Oh I really gotta get back on that thing. Um, Ask Trailblazer. Uh, so Tumblr.com slash Ask Trailblazer. Uh, you can also find me on DeviantArt at uh, mis- uh, DeviantArt.com slash uh, Mr. Pony Tim. Mm, awesome, awesome. You have a fanfic if I remember right? No? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, let, let me actually just ping that up. Yeah, I've wrote, written all of three stories. Hey, it's cool, man. But yeah, it's like uh, Mr. Ponytail. Pony, uh, yeah, it's actually Ponytail on this oh, one. Okay. 
Um, and I have uh, three stories. One of, uh, one of which has already had 931 views. It's my Pinkie Pie is related to who... All of my stories are based off of prompts um, <laughs> I got from like uh, the writing training rounds. Ooh, that, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so I... Like, uh, my three stories, how Queen Chrysalis got her evil groove back <laughs> with uh, Spike's number one assistant, and Pinkie Pie is related to who. Um, and the Pinkie Pie one has, like, uh, about twice as many views as the other two combined. <laughs> uh, awesome, awesome. You, you know what? Maybe I'll have a fanfic section, or maybe I'll have a fanfic discussion show one day, but, you know... Just this is all awesome. This is just all awesome. Oh man, I'll link everything in the show notes. I'll link everything in the show notes, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also listen to us on PonyvilleLife dot com. Links will be provided in the show notes. I have been Norman Sanzo. Hi, I'm Romuald. I'm Kitsune Risu. and I'm Pony Tim. And we'll see you next week, or would we? Let me double check the calendar. No, Norman's dying. Uh, no. Show again. Everyone, no. Rom, you're in charge now. <laughs> oh, promotion time! Uh, yeah, from someone who doesn't even work for the team. <laughs> Anywho, bye bye, guys. I see the same sun rising up, and with it I feel the same old Danny Duh. I like to let the earth just spin me around But I've been standing too still And I will not be stuck to the ground No, I don't want to stay I just want to go Taken by the wind Whichever way it blows Well, I just want to grow Show